good morning all uh, welcome you all in this lecture series of this uh, signal cell systems wherein this is the second lecture and i'll be discussing with you the concept of sampling theorem hope all of you are doing good take care of yourself with this warm note let us start with the discussion now uh, in our earlier course of time we have gone through the various concepts of signals and systems we have analyzed LTI systems. We have understood the purpose of convolution. We have understood the way the convolution carries out the analysis of LTI system. We also know how this uh, time domain systems are converted into Fourier uh, Fourier domain or frequency domain. Why there is a need of uh, frequency domain sampling? Uh, sorry, frequency domain conversion. All these things are right now there with us. And at this stage of uh, curriculum, we'll be going ahead with one of the very beautiful concept of sampling. Here, uh, let me tell you for what purpose in this entire lecture, let me tell you for what purpose we are going ahead with sampling. What are the consequences uh, that we may face if we don't carry out that sampling in a proper way? And what is the thing that we are required to uh, focus upon to carry out the proper sampling in order to obtain the desired discrete time signal? Okay, so th all these are the point of... Um, all, all these are the steps with which we'll be carrying uh, carrying ahead this particular discussion there. Now, when we start with the sampling, the very basic thing that one should know, know is for what purpose this sampling is done. As such, sampling is nothing but selecting the data from the huge data that is available to us. And when we study this sampling from the point of view of signals and systems, here the sampling is used to convert the continuous time signal into its discrete time form. See here the way I have drawn the things on the board. Here this is my continuous time signal. This continuous time signal is now multiplied with the impulses those are placed at particular interval of time this signal is multiplied with this e these impulses and only the points at which the impulse is present that particular part is replicated here in its equivalent discrete form or in, in its equivalent rather digital form okay so we can say that converting a continuous time signal into its discrete time form is nothing but sampling now the basic question that arises here is how, why the sampling is needed see all the signals those are present in nature are analog in as are analog now or all the signals those are present most of the signals rather most of the signals those are present there in real, in real world applications are analog in nature now to process such kind of analog signals we need first of all a huge large memory secondly the operations those are required to be carried out on the analog signals will be really really complex and lengthy one that is the thing from the mathematical point of view now, when we select upon certain, when we select only the certain samples from that analog signal, obviously the memory will not be a point of concern then. Similarly, the processing time required also will be lesser one and we can very well develop the algorithms which can uh, carry out those operations in an easier way and those the processors can be trained for those algorithms. So that is the basic reason behind that and second most thing is not all the signals are analog in nature some of the data some of the signals are in digital in nature themselves like suppose if i take the example of stock market values in that case in a certain period of time only uh, particular values i'm going to get so by that way i mean to say that the stock market values for a particular day are discrete or digital in nature those are not at no point of time those values are continuous in nature so the data there signal is nothing but something that carries information something that carries data data is nothing but the information so, so that data is digital in nature itself so to process such kind of data again we need to understand the concept of discrete signal processing or digital signal processing so that is the reason behind uh, using or behind uh, applying sampling on the continuous time data now what do we do when we carry out this particular sampling let me say that i have a particular switch and at one end of that switch suppose i have the continuous time signal and 
at the other end of the signal i am going to at the other end of that switch i am going to get the discrete time signal see how this particular thing thing happens is i am passing my continuous time signal here this switch is closed once the switch is closed the continuous time signal is passed over here and when the switch is open the continuous time signal is not passed let me say that this is the continuous time signal that i am passing through this particular switch at the end when the switch is closed when the switch is closed for suppose t is equals to 1 millisecond in that case initially i am going to get this data now again this switch is open right this switch is open i am not going to get the data for the time period for which that switch is open again the switch is closed if the switch is closed and it is there at this position again i am going to get the data for same period of time and if this particular process continues i am going to come across a waveform which is nothing but like this so this is my continuous time signal and this is the sampled version of my continuous time signal now the frequency with which this particular switch is operated is known as sampling frequency this is the heart of this particular unit this sampling frequency will be using like anything henceforth so and the time period for which that particular switch is closed uh, opened and closed that will be denoted as ts and that is known as sampling time that is known as sampling time so ts and fs these two are the most important concepts that we people are going to uh, study right now ts is the sampling time and fs is the sampling frequency right so our fs is most of the time it is also known as sampling rate this x of n now i can say that this x of n is not only x of n rather it is x of nts and how i obtain this x of nts i have sampled the continuous time signal a stands for analog not necessarily that you are required to show that a always just for understanding purpose i have shown it here this analog signal is sampled at t is equals to nts and when i sample this analog signal at t is equals to nts i am going to get the digital signal or discrete signal here now particularly i am um, uttering both the words there like digital signal and discrete signal what actually the difference is in between digital signal and discrete signal that i'll be telling you shortly now so i i hope this particular concept of sampling time and sampling frequency sampling frequency is a sampling rate is clear to you people see most henceforth let me be very clear with some of the conventions that we are going to use always for the analog frequency i'll be using capital f and for digital frequency we'll be using small f now if the frequencies are there in hertz uh, the these notations are to be used now if we are dealing with the angular frequency if we are dealing with the angular frequency then this large omega is not this relation is well known this larger omega is nothing but omega is equals to 2 pi capital f and this small omega is nothing but 2 pi small f so hence for these conventions will be fixed for our discussion always this if this notation anywhere if it happens that that denotes your angular frequency of analog signal and this denotes the angular frequency of the digital signal so that is what is we are going to follow henceforth now see here ha huh, before i move forwards again let me touch back one of the issue here that t is equals to nts can be very well represented like t is equals to n by fs why because we know that relation that ts is nothing but 1 by fs that particular relation also one should keep in mind now this while converting this analog signal into its digital form not only the sampler is the only thing that will be dealing with always along with this sampler we also have with us the quantizers and the encoders see here first of all the analog signal will be passed through the sampler at the end of the sampler what i am going to get is the discrete signal at this particular sig discrete signal is quantized into certain levels and that particular quantized signal will be passed on to the encoder which further will be encoding those quantized levels into their equivalent digital form so uh, 
let me draw that particular part again for your reference so that the entire idea will be uh, very clear rather very very uh, it becomes very very clear for you so suppose i have this analog signal t this is my x of t now in due course of time my signal will be something like this wherein i am going to get the quantized signal and furthermore this particular quantized signal will be now converted into its equivalent digital form this is the digital signal that i am going to obtain when i once i pass on that signal to the encoder so all this is all about the samples those are shown like this are the stem graph of the dis discrete signal this is the quantized form of the signal then this is the actual analog form of the signal so how to convert properly that analog signal into its equivalent digital form that is the point of focus here thank you